On a summer night in 2011, as cops desperately try to pin an armed robbery case on this suspect. Okay, good cop. Uh, no, usually I'm the prick. You look like the prick. I am. This is bullshit. I have enough evidence like what? of the armed robbery, okay? Because I don't believe that you got any evidence. Notice how the detective is growing more frustrated with time. In an attempt to prove his innocence, this heroin addict becomes an overnight internet sensation through his interrogation footage, which has made him the hero of one of the most talked about stories in true crime history. This is The Legend of Jeff. On a summer night in Georgia, 2011, community members are out on strolls and ticking off daily chores on their to-do lists. A local 7-Eleven around the corner has people lining up at the cash counter to pay for groceries and call it a day. Suddenly, several people start screaming from inside the store, which alarms people passing by and the others inside who don't know the reasons for the panic and chaos around them. An armed man had walked into 7-Eleven and threatened everyone with his gun. His intentions were clear. He wanted to rob the store and leave, and he wouldn't hesitate to harm anyone who got in his way. As customers at the store froze in fear and shock, some dared to hide away and call 911. In no time, emergency services received several calls for help but the robber escapes before the cops arrive at the store. The incident calls for a long night of pacifying scared customers and searching the area for a masked man in a black hoodie who had unleashed such terror in an unsuspecting community. Despite numerous trips to and from the store and involving several search parties, the cops had failed to find their guy or get any leads. As the evening turns to night, the investigators expand their search into the distant neighborhood in a last-ditch attempt to find one morsel of evidence. One of the cops notices commotion and hears screams in one of the neighborhoods. After calling for backup, the team decides to break into the chaotic house, finding a known heroin addict sitting on the floor with a gun. The addict is Jeff Pearson. After formally making an arrest that's based more on suspicion than evidence, they put him in this windowless interrogation room and question him for 16 long hours. In this footage, you'll witness a prime example of how certain police officers will go to great lengths to incriminate a suspect. Despite relentless questioning, Jeff skillfully defends his innocence and even manages to manipulate the detectives into providing him with soda and candy for an astonishing 16-hour period. But how exactly was Jeff able to pull this off? And what's this legend up to today? Keep watching to find out. Just look at how Jeff is sitting in his jail scrubs, seemingly composed. He might as well be in his grandma's living room. His confidence and calm demeanor make it clear that he's been through this before and knows exactly what to do. Am I under arrest? Not for now. I'm under arrest? Yeah, I'll, I'll explain everything, but before I, talk, before I explain myself to you, before we talk to each other, I need to read your rights, okay? What am I under arrest for? Well, like I said, I need to read your rights first. Obviously, the charge is robbery, okay? As the cops start reading Jeff his Miranda rights, notice how he intentionally avoids confirming if he understands. This clever decision by Jeff serves two important purposes. First, it sends a clear message to the cops that this won't be as easy as they thought. And second, by not verbally acknowledging, Jeff manages to buy himself more time before the detectives can question him about the robbery. Yeah, I'll, I'll explain it. I'm under you. arrest for robbery. You are, but let me read your rights real quick, okay? And then I'll explain it all to you. Is that okay? Can you mm -hmm. let me do that real fast? Mm -hmm. All right, Jeff. Can you read with me? Just read in your head, okay? Before we ask you any questions, you must understand that what your rights are. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can will be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to talk to the lawyer for advice before we question you and have him or her with you during questioning. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer and you want one, a lawyer will be appoint, uh, provided for you. If you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you'll still have the right to stop answering questions at any time. You also have the right to stop answering at any time that you want to, until you talk to the lawyer. Does that make sense? You've probably heard these before, haven't you? A cop concludes Jeff's rights with a snide remark about his past, aiming to assert dominance in the situation. As you're about to see, Jeff is completely unfazed by the detective's pathetic attempt to belittle him and continues to exercise his Miranda rights by remaining silent. At this point, it's evident by the detective's body language that they're growing frustrated with the development and that Jeff is firmly in control of the room. Atta boy, Jeff. Does that make sense? Did you understand your rights? Do you understand your rights, Jeff? Yes or no? Do you understand? 
we're getting paid more than you are, so we can sit here for a long time, man. I just need you to answer me. Yes or no, do you understand your rights? Let's get through that question. Do you understand what I read to you? Do you comprehend what I read to you? Jeff, I'm just here to talk to you and figure out what happened and move you on out of here at least some of it. So you understand the rights I read to you. If you got something that says you didn't do this robbery, this is your chance to talk to us. Okay, good cop. Uh, no, usually I'm the prick. You look like a prick. If it's dominance we're talking about, Jeff squeezed every ounce of it from the cop, rolled it into a ball, and dumped it into that garbage can. Jeff, do you understand your rights, yes or no? I'm not, I'm not asking if you want to talk to me at this point. I just wonder if you understand what I read to you. I still am I under arrest? Yes, you're under arrest. I'm getting back to the cell. I don't talk to you, motherfucker. Okay. In the initial round of interrogation, Jeff displayed the perfect response considering the circumstances. He understands that the cops are lacking evidence against him, otherwise they wouldn't have been questioning him in the first place. So, he keeps his mouth shut and heads back to his cell. But guess what? Just two hours later, they bring him right back to the same room for round two. And my oh my, ladies and gentlemen, does it get good from here. You want a coke? You gonna be able to pop it open or you need me to? Oh, yeah. I need methadone. You need methadone? Yeah, you guys can get me that methadone or what? I don't have any. Do you have medication for it or, I mean, a prescription for it? Or? No. What do you need methadone for? Because I'm a fucking junkie and you guys, and I can't get no methadone. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go through withdrawal here in a minute. A can of soda was all that Jeff requested before he returned to the interrogation room, but he immediately mentions that he's experiencing some severe withdrawal symptoms. He'd asked for methadone, a drug that helps reduce these symptoms. Despite the intense cravings he's probably been experiencing for the entire time he's been in police custody, Jeff seems to be the most sober person in the room. Where do you usually get your methadone from? I don't get it. I get heroin. How long have you been using heroin? Long time, buddy. Ten years? Fifteen years? I hardly been alive that long. What are you trying to talk to me about here? Talk to you about what happened last night. Look, here's the deal. Either you're in a bad, bad set of circumstances or you went and committed an armed robbery last night. Yeah, right? I'm in a shitty, uh, wrong place at the wrong time, obviously. I didn't commit no fucking armed robbery. All right, then let's talk about this. Let's, let's I don't, not have keep nothing, up I don't talk to the police, man. I think it's in your best interest to. Man. How? I don't you're, talk you're to the police. Here. Jeff is clearly fed up with the detective's personal questions and wants to get back to the matter at hand. The fact is, he's been wrongfully placed under arrest and is well aware it's his number one priority to get out of there as soon as possible. Okay. I've been through the system, buddy. I know, I know you works. have. I know you have, You're Jeff. not my friend. I'm not your friend. You're trying to fucking get me. Or you're no, trying I'm not to, trying to get you. All you're trying to get is some fucking stupid-ass fucking confession, and you're not going to get one. Jeff, I'm not going to get a confession out of you for nothing. Exactly, because I and didn't I'm do not nothing. It seems like that's the only valid statement the detective has made so far. Spoiler, he in fact does not get anything out of our man Jeff. The confession out of you. Okay, I'm going to tell you, I didn't commit no armed robbery, and y'all ain't got no fucking evidence saying I did. Let me go. All you did is find me sitting in my buddy's house, because my fucking buddy's dog's going to ape shit. I go outside, there are cops everywhere, and they spotlight me. They say, come here. I say, what's up? They search me. They ain't find nothing. What's Let up? Let me read this. No. Okay. Yes. Because I'm not going to sign it. You don't have to sign it. But let me read it for you. Okay? I'm not signing nothing. You don't have to sign it. Let me read it. You you heard it earlier already. You've been through the system. You know it. It ain't going to change a thing. You're still sitting here. Warning as to your rights guaranteed by the Miranda decision of the Supreme Court of the United States. You already read it to me earlier. I know we did. But I'm going to read it to you again. Thanks for the coat. You're welcome. Before we ask any questions, you must understand what your rights are. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before we question you and have him or her with you during questioning. If you cannot afford a lawyer and want one, a lawyer will be provided for you. If you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you will still have the right to stop answering questions at any time. 
You also have the right to stop answering at any time until you talk to the lawyer. Do you understand the rights I've explained to you? Oh. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Tell me what happened last night. Plain and simple. Your, your side of the story. I'm not talking to you. I'm warning you. Uh, all right. This is I, what I, I don't understand. What, I, told you I know, but this is what I don't understand, what? Jeff. You were sitting there talking just like you were ready to sit here and tell me what happened last night, and then all of a sudden I read that to you, and you said, screw it, I ain't talking to you. I want a lawyer. I don't understand that. What what Cause changed? Because I, cause I, the... I told you what, I already told you what happened. You didn't. How didn't I? You didn't tell me what happened last night. How didn't but, I just tell you what happened? But now you've handcuffed me, and I can't talk to you because you've asked for an attorney. Lawyer. So, okay, that's fine. But I will tell you right now, you're still on a hold for a robbery. I know. I don't know why I need a fucking lawyer because uh, obviously I didn't do nothing. And obviously you guys know I didn't do nothing because I've been arrested for the same bullshit before and you guys don't interview me this much. So wham, bam, thank you for the coke. Put me back in the cell. We That's my home. All right. Well, you haven't interviewed me yet. Yeah. I'm not being interviewed. I'm a lawyer. That's what I'm saying. We're all familiar with how interrogations work. The police must inform the suspect of their Miranda rights, which includes Jeff's right answer to have a lawyer present. At this stage, Jeff has asked to speak with a lawyer three times, but the cops aren't budging. In their desperation to pin the crime on Jeff, they're actually breaking the law on camera and should be held accountable for it. What's that? Just all right. I know we did this twice, but I got to do it again every time, okay? Before I ask you any questions, I got to read your rights. Either I remain silent, anything you say can will be used against you in the court of law. Either I talk to the lawyer for advice before we question you, have them with you during question. If you can afford to hire a lawyer and you want one, a lawyer will be provided for you. If you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer, you still have the right to stop answering questions at any time. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and sign there. I'm going to take your hands off. Look, you're not signing that. Okay, sign. you don't have to sign anything. You understand your rights, though, right? Yeah. That's all I need is a verbal yes? Yeah. Okay. What is this coat going to be here? Or is that just a fairy it, tale? It's coming. He's getting there right now. It'll be here in about two minutes. Just to watch the sewer machine. What do you want to talk about? Well, I need to know what this DOC or PMP hold is. What's that about? It's with your uh, parole. What, what does that mean? Basically, they put a parole violation on you. They put a violation on me? So I had this before? Or what? No, no. I got, I got you violated. You did? Yeah. For what? For uh, armed robbery. I, I ain't even charged with armed robbery. Maybe. Another one. Right. Well, I'm charged with armed robbery. Yeah, possession of firearm. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I got PFI on that. You did. Do you know what PFI means, right? Pending further investigation. That basically what that means is because there's no prosecutor on the weekends, I PFI you. Monday morning, I call a prosecutor and we write the case, and then we get a warrant for you for armed robbery. Uh. Tastes good. Mm-hmm. Uh. I talked to Aaron. I talked to Becky. Yeah. Got their statements. And they made statements. Yeah, they say. Say it was basically, I was just talking because when Officer Hawkins arrested you, he told you that uh, you told him that you went there. I didn't say I there. I just said I stayed there that night. Had you been there during the night? Yeah. Did Aaron know you were there? I'm pretty sure he did, yeah. I mean, he might have been asleep, but that's where I was staying that night. What time did you get there? No. You know what? I'm not answering any questions. This is bullshit. I'm happy to help you out. But you can't help me, man. Well, I can't. But... Can I have my buddy come in, please? Just finish your coat first. I don't get why I'm. I don't. I don't. Well, 
here's, here's what the deal is. I have enough evidence like what? of the armed robbery, okay? But, you know, if, if you're saying you didn't do it, you need to give me your side of the story. I didn't do it. Okay, well, give me your side of the story. You got to, I mean, convince me. Because I got a lot of evidence. I got a lot of physical evidence. Well, like what? Name why, don't we t I, why should I tell you that? The detective knows his time with Jeff is running short. As such, he's given up on using any intricate interrogation methods. He's now so hopeless to the point where the only trick he has left up his sleeve is to essentially threaten Jeff with false claims of evidence that he can use to convict him. I mean, you haven't been, you haven't been helpful to me at all. Because you don't, because I don't believe that you got any evidence. Okay. Because I didn't do it, so there's no... Well, here, here's it. I, I'll give you one piece of my evidence, okay? Yeah. One piece. The phone for 7-Eleven was taken by the suspect, whoever that was, okay? It was taken by the suspect and it was thrown in the dumpster behind 7-Eleven, okay? We got DNA off that phone. Right? That's one piece of my evidence. I have a lot of other evidence. Okay. Like what? There's only a couple pieces of evidence I'm missing. Name them. What's that? Name them. Why, why do I need to do that? You haven't helped me out at all. You give me a little bit, I give you a little bit. We go back and forth. I give you one of my pieces of evidence, now give me a little something. Alright? What time do you get over to Aaron's house? No, no, anything I say here can and will be used against me. Sure, but anything you say here, I can also tell your your, your parole officer that you help me out. That doesn't mean dick. At this point, the detective is basically begging Jeff to cooperate. If he does help him out, the detective can put a favorable recommendation in with his parole officer. But as Jeff points out, this don't mean what good is looking like a goody two-shoes to his parole officer if he's locked up in prison for 25 years? The only thing the detective has shown here is that he's aware they're running out of time and that Jeff will soon be walking out of here with a free Butterfinger in one hand and a can of soda in the other. For the next four minutes of the interrogation, Jeff effortlessly counters and dismisses all of the tricks thrown at him by the cops, including yet another false accusation of him robbing the place, an attempt to force Jeff to admit that the gun is his, and reminding him of how the conditions are inside a prison. Finally, after all those efforts crashed and burned, this intellectual specimen of a cop resorts back to his good old trusty putting in a good word with Jeff's parole officer. Truly amazing performance by the cop here. Someone needs to give this guy a bigger badge. Psych! Did I get you? Anyways, back to the interrogation. I'm done, man. Fuck this. I'm not even answering. All this shit that I just said is going to be fucking written in the discovery now, right? What? You haven't said nothing. I mean, every little stupid thing that you've asked me, dude, is going to be in the discovery. I thought you were going to do discovery. The prosecutor is. Okay. So, you, I mean, you, you halfway know the system, how things work, and you halfway don't. Am I right? I half-ass know yeah. that the only reason I came up here is to get a fucking Coke. Okay. And I got it. But now I want a Butterfinger. Nice. But that's not going to happen for a while. What, the butterfinger? Yeah. Why not? I need to go to the hospital. I'm coughing up blood. Let's go to the hospital. After delivering this master class on how to deal with an interrogation on wrongful conviction, it seemed as if Jeff had disappeared from the face of the earth. Two popular theories gripped fans all over the world for years. The first rumor was that Jeff was released after 12 hours of interrogation as the cops failed to produce any evidence against him and continues to live his life somewhere and has vanished. The other common theory was that the cops arrested him the following morning on similar charges and he spent 12 years in prison for armed robbery. So where's this popular anti-hero today? And what happened on that fateful night in 2011? Let's hear it from the legend himself. In the body of the thing, they said that uh, upon viewing the surveillance footage of the robbery, the suspect was uh, wearing a black hoodie and the same shirt that Mr. Pearson was wearing <laughs> when he was found. I'm like, wow, that's interesting. It looks like the part of the first theory is true. The cops let him go, but he doesn't live in mystery. Jeff did make it out, and he even turned his life around. He now has a YouTube channel where he documents several events from his life and still doesn't hesitate to call people out on their behavior. 
like this fake Karen he told off. What's going on? I just want to say you've been nothing but respectful, good, it's fine. you know what I mean? No, you're fine. You're you're by, fine. You're like by the book. Afterwards. You know what a Karen is. Between me and you. And he knows. Do you have any more questions for him? No, I would like him okay. to stop. Right. I'm well within my rights. You can't stop me from doing There's it. There's lights here. You don't have to put the camera in my face. Oh, I want you on YouTube. I'm going to make you famous. I don't want to be famous. Well, it's, you shouldn't accuse people of doing stuff that uh, they don't do. Uh-oh, she's about to go to jail, I guess. I'm sorry, what'd you say to me? You heard what I said. Come on. No, I didn't. What'd you say to me? I said, you're about to go to jail. You go ahead. You can do whatever you want. Strike me, hit me, do whatever you want. I'm not scared of you. Oh, no. no. <laughs> With over 65,000 subscribers, Jeff's followers grow on YouTube each day as he attempts to navigate life through music, gadgets, and cops.